Hi all. In the previous video, we learned about cell theory. What is cell theory? We also learned about microscopes that allow us to visualize cells. In this video, we'll discuss basic cell characteristics. In this slide, we see cells of different organisms. Photo A shows cells of the human nasal sinus. Notice the scale bar in the lower right corner of photo A. It says 10 mu m. We read that as 10 microns. A micron is a unit of length, like an inch or a mile, except much smaller than either of those. We'll define what a micron is in a little bit. For now, just notice that those human nasal cells are about, about 10 microns in diameter. Photo B shows a typical onion cell. You can see that these cells have more easily defined outer boundaries than do human nasal cells. That's because plant cells have cell walls, whereas animal cells, including human cells, do not have cell walls. In fact, we animals are weird in lacking cell walls. Most other uh, types of cells uh, have, do have cell walls. Notice also the scale bar is 50 microns. Those onion cells are about 200 microns in length, about 20 times bigger than human nasal cells. Photo C shows Vibrio bacteria. As we'll see, bacterial cells have much simpler structure than do plant and animal cells. Bacteria are also much smaller than plant or animal cells. The scale bar in this photo is only 500 nm. Nm stands for nanometers, which are 1,000 times smaller than microns. Vibrio are tiny. They're even on the small side compared to most other bacteria. Here's another view of cells. Both these photos show salmonella bacteria. The left photo is salmonella as seen through the compound light microscope, as we'll use in lab. Bacteria are just tiny dots, even at the highest magnification of light microscopy. The right photo shows salmonella through an electron microscope. Same cells, just a different view. Size is an important characteristic of cells. Bigger cells might be able to outcompete smaller cells for resources. On the other hand, smaller cells have less to build and can reproduce more quickly. There are lots of strategies for success. On this slide, we can see a comparison of the sizes of many structures. Starting on the right, we see a human. If that human is 5 feet 6 inches tall, then 1 meter is the size shown here. Each human body is made up of around 30 trillion cells. We each start out from a single fertilized egg. You can see that a human egg is about 200 to 300 microns in diameter. As I said earlier, mu m is read as micron. There are 1 million microns in each meter. Typical plant and animal cells range in size from tens of microns to hundreds of microns. This is quite a bit bigger than typical bacteria, which are only one or a few microns. And as can be seen uh, in Vibrio bacteria, uh, they are around 0.1 microns. This can also be written as 100 nanometers or 100 nm. There are 1 billion nanometers in a meter, so they are tiny units of measurement. We measure tiny things like viruses and even individual molecules like proteins and lipids using nanometers. It turns out that for cells, size matters. A mathematical relationship that affects all things, living or not, is called the surface area to volume ratio. We'll also call it SAV. Surface area is the amount of covering that an object has. Consider the cube in the picture. If we add the area of this front face with the area of the back face, with the area of the bottom face, with the area of the left face, with the area of the top face and the area of the right face, that is the surface area. The surface area is equal to 6 times the length of the side squared. If the length of one side is 2 microns, then the surface area of the whole cube is 24 microns squared. The volume of an object is the amount it takes to fill that object. Mathematic we see that here. Mathematically, 
the volume of a cube equals the length of the side cubed, or side times side times side. If the length of one side is 2 microns, then the volume of the whole cube is 8 microns cubed. The surface area to volume ratio is the surface area divided by the volume. SAV for a cube with side 2 uh, microns is 24 microns squared divided by 8 microns cubed equals 3 microns to the negative 1. Now compare this with a bigger cell, one that has side equal to 6 microns. The surface area for this bigger cube is 216 microns squared. The volume is also equal to 260 microns squared. And so the surface area to volume ratio equals 1 micron uh, to the negative 1. And if the cell is even bigger, for example, a, a side of 200 microns, like a human egg, the surface area is 240,000 microns squared, the volume is 8 million microns cubed, and the surface area to volume ratio is only way down at 0 0.03 microns to the negative 1. As the size of the cell increases, the surface area to volume decreases. One consequence of this is that the distance from the surface of the cell to the middle of the volume of the cell increases as the cell increases. Since nutrients come from the external environment, as the cell gets bigger, it becomes more and more difficult to feed the entire volume of the cell uh, all the way to the middle, unless the cell has special mechanisms for transporting those nutrients. We'll see some of those different strategies that cells use to accomplish these tasks in the rest of the Chapter 3 